Orla, I want to start first of all by thanking Leo Varadkar for the work he has done, particularly in the last four years, but also over the time in this stall. He leaves a record as leader of Teach of the Country when our economy has never been stronger. And I think history will judge that the way, Leo, your timing in, in how you manage Brexit with the British government, knowing when there was the time for a deal and what that deal would, should, would be, will stand the real recognition. And similarly, that critical moment early in 2020, when fear about COVID was so strong in the land, your words to reassure people at that time showed real leadership. And that record will travel with you, whatever you do next. I'm absolutely convinced, as the Tonisha says, you continue to have a role in public life. What you said this morning, I just heard, which was true, about leading a coalition of equals is very important. Because that ability to know it's not just about the numbers, it is about the ideas. It's about being open to persuasion. It's about being able to compromise and work collectively is hugely important. There's another person I've seen over the 20 years more I've been here is Simon Coveney. We started together, well you were there before me, but on the Joint Talks Committee on climate energy, thinking about technology, how we improve the lives of our people by thinking long term. And similarly, I remember that very difficult period during the financial crash when really it couldn't have got harder. I remember keeping in touch with Simon where there was connection between opposition and government. It didn't just, it was the public interest you were thinking of, not just your party's interests. And I remember, Brendan Howland will recall this, Mary Lou, you will too. During that Brexit period, how often did we go into Ivy House? Almost monthly, where Simon won an absolute open, transparent basis, not just us, but also trade unions, NGOs, academics, business community. He was an open book in operating a partnership model of government. We do social partnership in this country to share what was happening, to listen to what the best thinking might be. That partnership approach is the one that works, the one that delivers for our country. And this government is committed to it. For the remaining 10 months that we have been given the mandate under the Constitution to do. And I hear others saying, oh no, we have to have an election now. I fundamentally disagree because there's work to be done that we can deliver. Dara O'Brien has turned things around in housing where the numbers there do not lie. There has been a dramatic increase and that can continue and will continue. Similarly, I would argue, Stephen Donnelly, any honest assessment of the outcomes for delivery to improving the health qualities of our people would show again a record of improvement that we need to continue laser focus because that's what's important for our people. And similarly, as the Taoiseach says, we are starting to turn and show real leadership in climate as a people. We are good at this. We're starting to see the emissions last year in power generation. What did they fall? Was it 17%? And we're only warming up. And there's immediate tasks <laughs> warming up the Irish people in delivering a solar revolution, delivering retrofitting, delivering public transport. You can laugh at that, but that actually improves and transforms the quality of people's lives, which is what our job is to deliver. We have got immediate projects. Rather than having election, I believe we should spend our time delivering a future broadcasting funding mechanism so that the, one of the biggest challenges of our time, which is the misinformation and disinformation that is widespread across the land and across the world, we have to deliver that before the summer recess, as we have all agreed. We have to deliver what Roger Gorman has set in train a way of actually managing the international protection and the people coming into our country in a way that works for all our people. And there's immediate work to be done on that. That cannot delay, wait for an election, and then whatever period of time that takes. I'd prefer for us to deliver that now.
I would prefer, prefer to deliver and go to government as I intend in coming weeks on a strategy and an approach towards a just transition towards a sustainable future which really picks up on that partnership model and that legislation I would prefer to bring to the House rather than going to an immediate election. And we have work to do, each party here. Show me a party which is prepared for an election, which has a manifesto already written, which has the answer to the key questions of our time in terms of how do we go now to 90% emission reductions by 2040? How do we deliver the further advances in housing and health? We should spend time thinking about that. But first, we have two elections that we do need to give due attention and due respect rather than calling for another immediate general election. We have a Europe, well that's a question Michael, that would be up to the people and the people have a choice there. The people in our European election, and this is a big, historical, important European election, where in one hand you have, in one hand you have people putting themselves forward, Europe is full, climate action can wait, I wouldn't touch those vaccines. We, wouldn't, we don't need to restore nature. Well, I don't agree with that vision of the future, and I think it's important that that decision of the Irish people and people across Europe is the focus of our attention in the next 10 weeks. Just as importantly, if probably even more importantly, is us giving attention to the local elections. In our country, we all talk about Bunrock the Heron, our constitution system, the cornerstone of our democracy is in every constituency, every council, every strategic the meetings of the councillors. Those incredible difficult decisions, we all know, anyone here who has been a councillor, know it's one of the hardest places to be. Because sometimes you have to take a hard vote and the public gallery is behind you. And you have to raise your hand, you know something that you believe is right, but what not everyone wants to see. And I think our constitutional imperative should be on focusing on those local, European, lo local and European elections now. It will be strange, out of respect to our constitution, I would refer to the Taoiseach and Tánis, that by those titles are going to have to turn to Leo and the Taoiseach now, Simon, beside... Where's Simon gone? <laughs> I think he's very well placed. Can I say, just as a background, as a teenager, he established that AAA autism group in Wicklow. Now, that, believe it or not, is not that unusual. Right across the country, there are civic actions like that where people are actually coordinating and organising to improve the quality of lives of their people. In autism alone, Snowflakes up in swords. Snowflake because every individual is special and different, but occasionally can suffer a meltdown. Organises activities for children, families with autism. Open Spectrum in South Dublin does the exact same. Rainbow Clubs in Cork. It's all over the country. We have this tradition of civic engagement. And part of that is recognising that the state does not do enough. And that's where the instinct comes from to go into politics, which all of us have in different forms. And all this assembly is, all this house is, is that ordinary Irish people who have been given the mandate to try and decide how do we allocate resources. That's what we're deciding here today, to elect a Taoiseach to represent all of us, and through us, all the people. I believe the strength Simon showed in that COVID, like the Taoiseach in that COVID period, would stand to him in the hard decisions you have to make in government, which is the real test, when you can do the hard thing. I also think in this recent last year, last four years, working within our cabinet, that he has that sense that this future has to be green, because we've turned around the apprenticeship scheme, recognising the future for young people in this country is through this green just transition. Nothing, that's the greatest opportunity for us. And it starts from our young people. And it's coming from our young people. And I think what he learned in that time in Cabinet, in that role, sets me confidence that we can continue on that path. And it is Cabinet, not just Taoiseach and Tánishta, because actually 
working in a cabinet is what's important, working in that collective, collective responsibility way. There will be new people coming to the cabinet, Lord only knows who yet. But actually, I'm confident we can retain what both Taoiseach and Tonish just said, is collective cabinet responsibility and partnership that can and will, for the remaining 10 months of this Thank government, you. deliver for the people. Thank you.